a dish that goes by the initials CKT, a noodle dish called a Sam Laksa, and a dish named after buckets of rice and curry. This week, we're in Penang, Malaysia. Traveling the world to bring you delicious dishes, tasty beverages, and interesting experiences. This is the Destination Eat Drink Podcast on the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. I'm Brent Peterson. Welcome to Destination Eat Drink, the travel podcast for foodies. This is where the world of travel and food come together at DestinationEatDrink.com, on the Destination Eat Drink YouTube channel, and here on the Destination Eat Drink podcast. This week, we're in Penang, Malaysia, with Pauline Lee of Simply Anak Food Tours. But first, if you're a traveling foodie, be sure to subscribe to the show, and if you like it, leave a review on your podcast app. And if you're able, please consider supporting Destination Eat Drink with a one-time or recurring contribution at buymeacoffee.com slash Destination Eat Drink, and thank you very, very much. Pauline Lee is the founder of Simply Anak Food Tours in Malaysia. They take hungry travelers to discover the delights of Malaysian cuisine in the cities of Kuala Lumpur and Penang. Pauline was on the show a few months back talking about KL, and she was so engaging, I asked her to return to talk about Penang. She agreed, and you'll hear our conversation in a moment. Pauline tells me about Penang culture and what makes the area of Georgetown so special. Plus, she tells me about dishes like Mi Sutong and Penang Hokin Mi. Plus, Pauline gives big props to Penang, which, as a person from Kuala Lumpur, is a big deal. It would be like a Red Sox fan praising the Yankees. Okay, I'm starving, so let's eat. Destination, eat, drink. Pauline Lee from Simply Anak Food Tours. Welcome back to Destination, Eat, Drink. I'm so excited to talk to you today about Penang, Malaysia. Pleasure's mine as well, Brent. Ah, Just so looking forward to talk about Georgetown, Penang. It's the place that I want to retire. Oh, good. (laughs) Hopefully you're not going to retire too soon because, you know, we want to have you for more food tours. Um, We had such a good time talking about Kuala Lumpur a few months ago. I wanted to have you back to talk about Penang. Um, And before we get into the specific dishes, why don't you give the audience an idea of what they can expect in Penang? Tell me about this place a little bit. So in in Penang, well, basically there is mainland and the island, Georgetown. Um, it how say it takes about four to five hours from the capital Kuala Lumpur. Um, you could either um, take a train, take a bus, or fly directly to Georgetown. There is so much to do in Penang, and to do justice, I think some a visitor a new B to Penang we at least need uh, three nights, four days, at least. And you can spare four nights, five days to fit in everything that you can do in Penang. What are some of your favorite things to tell tourists to do when they come to Penang? Um, in Penang, uh, we've got the, um, of course, there's a whole list of uh, street food or food that you should try in Penang. Uh, there are some really nice, uh, authentic uh, t- uh, temples as well that you can go to. The Goddess of Mercy Temple, the Masjid Kapitan Curling Mosque. So places of worship, yeah. You have uh, the uh, St. George Church as well. And uh, there is, of course, you could do loads of things. Uh, if you want to take it a notch down to have a bit of relaxing uh, time in Penang, you could go to Balik Pulau as well. Uh, Balik Pulau is a bit like the village in Penang. Uh, and you could have durians over there as well, stay in a retreat. Uh, yeah, and of course, try shore. You need to experience try shore. I had a shock sitting myself for the first time a couple of years ago, um, but it's fun to do. It's really nice. Um, the try shore versus the tra- traffic in Penang. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you need to go to the clan houses as well to understand the different clans in Penang. And uh, the Penang Peranakan Museum is another one to go to as well to understand uh, the Peranakan culture, the Baba Nyonya customs. 
uh, and you can dress up. So just like how you could go to Tokyo to, or uh, in Japan in Kyoto to dress up uh, with a kimono and walk about. Uh, in uh, Penang, you can do the same as well. Oh, really? Dress up like a nyonya. Yes, dress up like a nyonya um, uh, with the kabaya, lovely kabaya outfit. Um, you need to lose a couple of pounds first to do that, <laughs> but possible. All right. And walk around uh, the UNESCO Heritage City. So, yeah, there's so, so much to do. Are there outfits for both men and women? Uh, women. <laughs> women only. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so far, uh, so, women, yes. So I don't have to lose weight. It's a good question. <laughs> Let me ask the Penang Pranadakan Museum the next time. Uh, <laughs> You know, you mentioned a couple of things, the clan houses and the Peranakan culture. And one of the things that I love talking to you about is um, in Malaysia, it's such a diverse place and so many different ethnic groups. Tell me a little bit about the clan houses and the Peranakan culture in Penang. Okay, I'll start with the Peranakan first. So uh, it's an interesting word, the Peranakan. So the root is actually anak, yeah, Peranakan, anak. So that's the root word child. Uh, it means child and uh, or born of. So some the person uh, will be born, for, for example, in Penang, but is from somewhere else. So the, the mixture of culture. So uh, the most, when you talk about Baba Nyonya, uh, in Penang, uh, the first uh, thing you relate to would be the uh, Chinese. The Chinese traders married to a local woman in Penang. And so that's the, Baba refers to male, Nyonya refers to female. So then you have the Pranakan Baba Nyonya, uh, Chinese and Malay mix. But the word Pranakan can also mean, so it's born of, but from somewhere else. Could be from China, could be from India, Arab, Europe, and others. So, uh, you know, today, or with the limited time, we're talking about the Chinese. Yeah. So uh, in Penang, you could also see the Jawi Pranakans as well. You can see the Arab Pranakans as well. Uh, if you go to uh, Malacca, you see the Chetis as well. Yeah. So the Tamil traders that reside, that 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 uh, went to Malacca to trade. Yeah. So uh, in, uh, in Penang, it is the Straits. Uh, 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 Penang being one of the straight settlements, yeah. We've got Penang, we've got Malacca, we've got Singapore. So the main focus is the straight Chinese. Yeah. So Peranakan is from intermarriage with Malaysian people of of immigrants, Correct. and then they've been here for generations. They've been in Malaysia for generations. They bring their culture and they create a new culture in Malaysia that is you know, maybe uh, influenced from China and has Malaysian uh, roots to it. How w- how do you describe yes. this to folks who come and visit you in Penang? My forefathers come from the southern China, and most of my Indian friends would have the f- ancestral coming from the southern Indian part as well. Makes sense because southern China, southern India, closest to Malaysia, the peninsula Malaysia. So for the Chinese ancestral, so that's why you have Gongsi as well in Penang, yeah, the clan houses. So you've got in Penang, you've got the Chia Gongsi, the Lim Gongsi, Gu Gongsi, Ui Gongsi, Tan Gongsi, Yak Gongsi. So all the different types of clan uh, uh, temples or ancestral homes, they're riding from mostly southern side of China. Uh, so you've got the Tier Chus, uh, and then of course Penang, you've got the predominantly Hokkien uh, uh, Gongsis, Hokkien clans, yeah, Hokkien people. Can we visit these clan houses in Penang? Uh, yes, uh, the walk that we do, we walk in the clan houses and we pass by. Uh, we advise, uh, you know, uh, visitors to take their time, actually. So that's why with the length of time, with more time, uh, you can spare a morning or an afternoon going through this Kongsi and really understanding the intricate history and facts about the clan and the ancestral home. Let's talk about uh, your food tours, because you do a couple of food tours in Penang. One is in Georgetown. And... I heard Georgetown called the food capital of Malaysia. 
That, that's that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty big words for a country that has such a great culinary um, history and culture. You do the food tour in Georgetown. What makes the food scene there so special? I myself, personally, I'm from the capital, Kuala Lumpur, um, but I fell in love with Georgetown. And there's so much Georgetown can offer. Uh, it's how I say um, the charms of this uh, pearl of the Orient. There's so much to list down and share. Um, so we have two food walks, one in the morning and one in the evening. And different times of the day, you could see or be exposed or experience different things. And also eating different things. Penang is the food capital. And even from Kuala Lumpur, uh, we have this word kau tau, meaning I salute <laughs> Penangites right. and Penang because they came out with the origin char kway teow, for example. We call it CKT. It's stir fry noodle. Uh, it's probably like another version of Pad Thai, but better, of course. <laughs> 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 and they have the best nasi kanda. Yeah, it's nasi is rice, kanda, yeah, uh, it's the pole to carry the, the the rice and the curry in those days, yeah. Uh, so they have a lot of food. Uh, they're basically like the institution, like, you know, the the where most dishes come from. So, yes, uh, a lot of respect for Penang. So what is the uh, char kwe tiao dish? Yeah, so char kwe tiao dish is like stir fry rice noodles. It has, um, the condiments are like, um, of course, pork lard. You've got uh, bean sprouts, shies, uh, Chinese sausages, and cockles. We call it siham, yeah, in Cantonese. So it's stir fried, it's dried, and you could either have it extra spicy or normal or no spiced. That's how you order CKT. CKT. Okay, so we, we <laughs> yeah. don't we don't need to learn how to pronounce it. We can just go by the initial CKT. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier. <laughs> so is this a is this considered a street food dish, or is this a sit down in a restaurant dish, or is this an everywhere dish? So it's considered a street food dish, um, and how it you know with like most popular dishes, they start from the cartwheel, the simplest form you know, with the least rental, yeah, street food. And then they progress to, you know, have a bit more savings. They go into a shop lot. So they rent a space in a, uh, we call it the kopi, kopi tiam, okay, a coffee shop, yeah. And uh, then, of course, as it gets more popular, then it gets more luxurious, you know, in a restaurant, yeah. But the best CKT is naturally the ones in the kopi tiams. So we've got one called Ping Hui in Penang, and that's my favorite and to go to. What other dishes do you look forward to on the Georgetown food tour? In the morning, you could experience you experience a market actually, a Chow Rasta uh, market, and you'll see the offerings around the market. Uh, you'll taste um, pickle fruits, yeah, and you'll have dodol. Dodol is a glutinous rice, glutinous sticky rice. Sweet, if I may call it. You've got the pandan flavor and you've got the durian flavor as well. <laughs> we can't forget durian in this topic, yeah? Yeah, right. <laughs> Penang is... <laughs> the famous fruit. <laughs> yes, correct. Um, but yeah, so we have um, the morning CKT, Chakuitiao as well, from the market. And we have uh, Chichong Fan as well. So that's uh, uh, also rice noodles. Uh, with chili and uh, sauce, yeah, mm, the shrimp paste. Uh, and then you can experience the local kopitiam affair. So what I mean by that is you try the local coffee or tea uh, or a mixture of both or uh, a local uh, Penang style okasai, which is like a mocha. Yeah. And then you have a uh, steam uh bread uh or a toasted bread with the local jam which is kaya mixed with butter that morning tour sounds absolutely delicious and i love the fact that you always go to markets on your uh on your food tours because it's such an important part of local culture 
Yes. Market is the heartbeat. I mean, that's where it starts before cooking, isn't it? You need to go to a market, you know, to buy the ingredients. And one thing to highlight in the more uh, in the morning is the kue. Kue is almost like the Western pastries. So you've got the French croissant, uh, but in Penang you have the local kueis, yeah, whether it's sweet or savory. And that's a very intrinsic uh Preparation, long hours to prepare it and to get a good kueh is not easy. What is the base of the kueh? Most of the time, it's from rice flour or glutinous rice flour and desiccated coconut. So my favorite is uh, you have the tapioca, bingkai ubi, yeah, the kueh. You've got the onde onde. Uh, you've got uh, kueh lapis. Uh, you've got uh, 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 tayab as well. Uh, so these are the some of the uh, offerings from this Baba Nyonya mix, this uh, uh, Chinese mix with the local Malays. Yeah, these are some of the quiz. Uh, and uh, yeah, the list goes on. There's so many. I'm already salivating as I speak to you, Brent. <laughs> That's that's what we do at this podcast. It's 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 all about making people hungry, both the listeners and the people who are talking. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, desserts and sweets, I read about something called um, I think it's pronounced sendol, C E N D O L. Are you familiar uh, with chindol. this? Chindol. Chindol. Okay. Yeah. What can you tell me about this? So chindol is like shaved ice. Uh, the key ingredient is the uh, coconut milk and the uh, pea flour, yeah. And then you've got pandan as well, of course, that makes it green, yeah. So uh, it's, and the most important thing too is the gula malaka, yeah. The gula malaka syrup, right, uh, yeah. to lace the ice. So it's a something that the Indian traders probably brought. You know, those days working in the pots, yeah, it's very hot and uh, yeah, what is sensible is to have an ice cream, right? But those days, um, there was chendol. Yeah, and as I was reading about this, we lived in Hawaii for a little while, and that's what it reminded me of was was shave ice. And yeah. you, know, you know, when you go in, you go to the real good shave ice places in Hawaii, they make their own syrups. They don't use the bottled syrups, and you can yeah. get all different kinds of flavors. I love the strawberry with the coconut. Is is that the same with sendol? You can get different uh, toppings, different flavors with it. Um, yeah, you can get uh, you can get very creative. Of course, we always have the basics, right? So, like I said, the basics is coconut milk. Uh, you know, you've got the uh, the uh, how to say shave ice, the palm sugar. Uh, Malaysians, we're very good at pimping up things, <laughs> so you can uh, pimp it up with a very very good musang king, which is the durian, of course. Uh, so that that makes the chendo uh, exclusive or a bit more luxurious. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you've got the grass jelly and the different types of colors as well. The syrup, like you said. Uh, but Malaysian's top favorite is with a with a, a three well a slice of durian or two slices of durian. Mm. I love how you always bring it back to the durian. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so popular. Um, so you mentioned you have the morning tour in Georgetown and the evening tour. I love it that you have two different ones and that they're really different experiences. What is the experience like in the evening tour? What kind of stuff could we expect? So in the evening, I like to combine, it's a bit of an art to combine a bit of the street food. And of course, you get the... Uh, two jetties, uh, the jetties we visit over there, and uh, a bit of a nightlife of uh, Georgetown as well. So it's a blend of all these things. So we have a tasting of um, the Malay kitchen at the start. So of course, if you come to Asia, Malaysia, you need to try a version of satay, for example, you get that. And then you've got the pengat pisang. It's like a banana puree. The, the easiest way to put it. And uh, we've got chucho bada, uh, which is another pastry, yeah, or a cake, uh, savory. And um, you also get um, a bit of a tasting of uh, uh, 
dosé, uh, uh, breads, the ginger teas, uh, and then we progress to the Chinese street food, which is the uh, wonton mi, which is the noodles, uh, dry noodles. Uh, and then, of course, we got the Penang Hokkien Mee as well. Not to be confused with the KL Hokkien Mee. Yeah, I was going to say, because there's different kinds of Hokkien Mee. Uh, one in Kuala Lumpur, there's other ones. I think there's one in Singapore, maybe two. What makes the Penang Hokkien Mee different? Um, like I said, Penang can claim and proudly claim many, many fame signature dishes. And one of it is Hokkien Mee. Um, Hokkien Mee is uh, so similar to laksa. Is basically noodles in broth. And this one is prawn broth. Prawn and pork. Yeah. So you've got the prawn hicks as well uh, in the, in, as a stock uh, with the uh, best of the pork bones. Yeah. Um, Penang, it's a signature dish from Penang. Uh, it, you can have it with rice noodles or rice vermicelli or me, yellow noodles. Uh, I typically like a mixture of noodles with rice vermicelli and rice noodles. Um, and then you have eggs, you've got the shallots, and then, of course, you've got the shrimps as well, shredded chicken, uh, and it's a wholesome broth of noodles. Yeah, so um, Penang is also famous for another broth noodles, which is the Penang Asam Laksa. That's the sour noodles. So that's also another big thing, the Penang Asam Laksa. Yeah. And this noodles, so very different from the prawn stock pork uh, Hokkien Mee. This is a bit more of everything is in this bowl of noodles called the Penang Asam Laksa. So Asam is sour. So you've got the sour, you know, from tamarind. You've got the uh, spicy, spiciness, the spices from the chili. You've got, um, of course, it's the base is a uh, uh, fish, yeah? So some people use mackerel, some people use sardines. So it's quite a fishy broth, but that's when the pineapple comes in to balance up with the shallots. And also you have to mint as well to calm down the fishiness of the broth. Mm. So... Uh, it's what's the taste of Penang Asam Laksa? It's a hybrid of sweet, savory, sour. Everything is, every senses is tested in the Penang Asam Laksa. As I'm listening to you talk, Pauline, I'm thinking about these street foods and they sound divine, but I'm wondering, um, you've got the uh, Hakin Mi that has the shrimp in it, the prawns. You've got the laksa, which probably has a, a fish broth to it. Is there anything from the street food that uh, vegetarians or vegans could enjoy? <laughs> um, that's an interesting one. Yeah, recently I've created uh, one of my latest products is the vegetarian food walk. Oh, uh, wow. So, uh, yeah. Dedicated just I to vegetarian. With... Hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. I have to admit the vegan is a bit of a test, uh, but... Um, you know, vegan and street food, um, you know, it's not impossible, um, but to hit as many uh, spots as the vegetarian one, it's slightly challenging, but not impossible. So uh, we've done, back to the vegetarian, um, there, there is a place in Penang that serve a vegetarian Penang Asam Laksa. And I was blown oh. up and amazed by that. I I have to admit, um, I'm a vegetarian myself twice a week uh, because of going to the markets and being exposed to so much stock. Um, I I need to have this two twice a meal vegetarian to stay a little bit sane and balanced, you know, <laughs> <laughs> carbon footprint and everything. But yes, um, the vegetarian world is very interesting. You get satays made from lion mane mushrooms. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's such an and it's almost like eating the new the real thing. Okay, it's there's still a difference naturally, but to me, when I tasted the satay and the sauce and the Penang Apsa Lassa vegetarian style uh in this place, oh, it's yeah, I do not miss. I do not miss the real meat. It's interesting that you said that that the mushroom substituting because Yesterday, 
we went into Lisbon and we went to our favorite restaurant in all of Lisbon. It happens to be a vegan restaurant. And they serve mm-hmm. a dish called uh, Choco Frito, which is a uh, famous dish here in my city of Setubal, which is a uh, fried, deep fried and breaded cuttlefish, which is like a octopus, similar to an octopus. But they ah. substitute, instead of the cuttlefish, they substitute in mushrooms. And I love this dish because they serve it with a uh, basil uh, aioli uh, oil and uh, oil uh, emulsified oil yeah. sauce. is so, so delicious. It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. ones. And it, uh, it, it even it beats the original by a long shot, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's talk about a couple other dishes in, uh, in Penang. Um, what about this dish called uh, nasi kandar? Nasi kandar, yes. So nasi is rice. Kandar is the pole that used to carry two pots. So in those days, when they walk through the village to sell, or when they go to the pots to serve the Indian traders that come, eh, coolies that work in the pots, so they carry one pail of rice, the other pail with curries. Of course, those days, uh, it's not as uh, the the... It's not as fancy as the, these days. Yeah, so you have either curry chicken or, you know, a beef curry, vegetable curry, yeah. Um, so these days, you can go to a nasi kanda restaurant and find 30 to 50 types of different curries and dishes Whoa. that you can eat with your rice. So you have rice, plain rice, but you also have uh, the biryani rice or pulau rice, pilau rice, sorry. And uh, but beware, be aware, the visitors going to nasi kanda restaurants, that what you choose is going to be what you pay. So naturally, if you have a plate of rice and you choose uh, ten items, hmm. right? You, so you want a crab, you want a. Um, uh, 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 mutton, you want chicken, you've got this uh, fried chicken, squid, you've got fish. So that's going to cost you. So be aware and hmm. be cautious with that one. Okay. So you need to spend at least a good 15 to 20 ringgit to have a nasi kanda. Uh, or you can even pay 80 ringgit for a plate of rice. Mm. Okay. And that translates to what, like 10... 10 bucks US maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know the uh, the conversion rate right off the top of my ah, head. That's about four US dollars. Oh, so only that four. Would be the, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, when you convert it, it's, it's pretty relatively cheap. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, four US dollars. Um, compare, and of course, 80 ringgit, which is the top, you know, it's really over. So a, that would be maybe, um, yeah, 20, 25 US dollars. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of seafood, we were talking about the different uh, seafood dishes that you can get when you're in Penang. There's one that I thought was interesting that I'd like to bring up, which is the oyster omelet, because I don't normally think of seafood going in with an omelet, but it makes sense. Um, this is a popular dish in Penang, I assume? Yes, the ojian. We call it the ojian. The local word is o. So the fried oyster omelette. Um, it's uh, interestingly the locals love it. Uh, you know, every Malaysian most of the time would like it, uh, unless there are some folks who are a little bit more sensitive towards oysters. Yeah, because there's this thing about eating oysters fresh, fresh. So that is something you've got to be aware of. But uh, there are two versions of the oyster omelette. Either you have it a little dry or a little wetter version. So the oyster omelette um, uh, is, uh, we call it a minan dish. So uh, you have it, uh, uh, the influence comes from southern China. And that's why you have it in Taiwan as well. Yeah, the coastal of the southern China. So that's why this dish, you can get it in Taiwan as well. But in Penang, it's a very popular dish. Any other dishes that you want to talk about that are famous in Penang or that you particularly enjoy, Pauline? Uh, for me, it's the mi sotong at mi Fort sotong. Convalis. Okay. Yeah. Have a mi sotong, wash it down with a coconut shake. Ah, that will be D-Day. Uh, <laughs> what is mi sotong? Yes. <laughs> Me 
noodles, most of the time yellow noodles. Uh, sotong is uh, sweet, uh, mi sotong. If you Google it, mi sotong, you can see how it looks like. Um, it's, uh, how to say, the mi sotong is Penang, is divine. You cannot get mi sotong in KL. Uh, you can get mi mamak in the capital, in Kuala Lumpur, but mi sotong is very unique to uh, Penang, and especially the Fort Convalis version. It's uh, 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 fried, it's basically noodles, the yellow noodles, stir fry with the sambal paste, chili paste. It's got the, the, <coughs> the sotong, and you've got like bean sprouts, all stir fry together. And it's so delicious. And you have the co coconut shake, and it's a perfect pair. I was going to say, well, you've got that spicy chili. You need to wash it down with the coconut. It sounds like a perfect combination. Mm, definitely. Well, Pauline Lee, we'll look for you uh, when we're in uh, Penang, washing down your hot chili noodles with a uh, coconut shake. From uh, Simply Anak Food Tours, Pauline Lee, thank you so much for being on Destination Eat Drink. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. I love your enthusiasm. I love your knowledge of uh, Malaysian cuisine, but also how much uh, of just enjoyment comes through in the conversation when we talk. So thanks again for being on the show. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Brent. Pleasure's mine. That's the delightful Pauline Lee. So good to catch up with her about Penang. And if you're planning a trip to Malaysia, be sure to check out the Simply Anak food tours. You can find them at simplyanak.com. That's simply e n a k.com. I've also got a link in the show notes. Well, that's it for this week. Next week we are in the island nation of Malta for a massive dish called timpana and tasty zapales. Until then, Get over to DestinationEatDrink.com. I just posted a story about where to get the best tapas in the gorgeous city of Cadiz, Spain. You can read that at DestinationEatDrink.com slash blog. I also just posted a brand new video. This time it's about some of my favorite places in the Grasa neighborhood of Lisbon. You can see that on my YouTube channel at Destination Eat Drink 946 or just click on the video tab at DestinationEatDrink.com. Destination Eat Drink is distributed by the Radio Misfits Podcast Network and Ed Silla. Thanks, Ed. I'm Brent Peterson. I'll see you down the road. Join us next week for another culinary adventure on Destination Eat Drink, a presentation of the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. <laughs>